I just want to give just a word of warning before I start tonight. Father uh, Hoffa, my classmate, told me that I should be dressed up for the night, so I got out what this is a, called a priest casting. This is my good one. And I bought this a couple of years before I was ordained while I was still in the seminary, and it's been a while since it's been on. So I just want to warn you, if I exhale the wrong way, <laughs> if you hear a ping, somebody might lose an eye, okay? <laughs> so you've been warned. I had the opportunity a couple of months ago with Father Hoff and more than 35 young people from the diocese to go to Madrid, Spain for World Youth Day, and it was awesome, wasn't it? All right. How many of you have heard of World Youth Day, right? Okay, good. We know what World Youth Day is. We were all over there to be with the Holy Father. It was this incredible trip because we were with the young church throughout the world. And it was a reminder for all of us that the church is eternally young. And there were young people, just like you and I, but hundreds of thousands of us, in fact, nearly two million of us, crammed into the city of Madrid for this amazing event. And there was a couple of things that really stand out in my mind. A couple of things. The big one, we got to see Pope Benedict. We were just a couple of feet away. It was this amazing moment. We, we heard the great message he had for us. Bishop Barris talked a little bit about that, to grow deeper in our faith, to be firmly rooted in our faith because our faith is from God. Our faith is rooted in the word of God. Our faith is rooted in the Eucharist. It's not rooted in the world. It's rooted in what God has given us. There were great highlights, seeing the beautiful country, being with all these young people, being with the Holy Father. But when I look back, I think the thing I remember most was when I lost one of the girls from my parish in a subway station. <laughs> and, so, and so if you go to Madrid today somewhere, I'm afraid that there's a high school girl from Reading still riding the subway. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. She's here tonight. We eventually found her. But it was amazing. But more than anything else that drew the young church together for those days, was the same thing that draws us here together tonight. The reason we were at World Youth Day, we were constantly reminded there in Spain of why we were there. And it's the reason that we're here in St. Thomas More tonight. It's the reason we're in Allentown tonight gathered as a diocese. We were there because of the Eucharist. We were there because Jesus is really present. His body, his blood, his soul, and his divinity. It's what brought us together there. It's what brings us together tonight. And so... How wonderful it was we started with the Word of God and a meditation on the Word of God and Lexio Divina, and I can only encourage you, take that to heart. It's one of the greatest forms of prayer. Don't ever lose it. Now, there's a lot of great scriptures to dive into. Pope Benedict has, has challenged all of us. He did it at World Youth Day when we were there. He's challenged every one of us to be biblical Catholics, to dive into the Word of God, to pray with the Word of God. And there's a lot of great passages about the Eucharist, either directly or indirectly. You know, in the Old Testament, we read about the manna from heaven. We read about the Passover feasts. We read about the sacrifices offered in the temple. And we can look back and see all of them in light of the Eucharist. And then in the New Testament, I think everybody here is familiar with the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes. A great story. Okay? Great miracle. We're familiar with the, the disciples on the road to Emmaus in Luke's gospel. One of my favorite passages from Scripture is that one. There's the bread of life discourse from John 6. Open up your Bible. You can read through it tonight when you go home. John 6. Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and whoever eats this bread will live forever. Every one of those passages is important, and it's meaningful. And take the time to look into them after tonight. But the passage that we chose tonight to look at was chosen for a very specific reason. It's from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. And I ask that we looked at that passage, that we pray with that passage tonight for this reason. It is the oldest account of the Eucharist that we have. It is the first thing that we have today that was written down that tells us about the institution of the Eucharist and the moment that it happened. And it's so very powerful. Let's think about it for a moment. If we really dive into that passage, if we really open our hearts and minds and souls and pray with what we heard, we are going to be taken with Jesus and with his apostles, and he's going to take us with them into the upper room. It's Holy Thursday night. They're celebrating the Passover together. They're at the Passover table. And in that Passover ritual, he takes simple bread very simple wine, and he gives them a new significance, a glorious significance, because it's there that Jesus, as the eternal high priest, first gives us his body and blood, the most powerful experience of his love that we have. It happens there. St. Thomas Aquinas would say that nothing 
in the world has more power to heal us. Nothing has more power to forgive our sins than the Eucharist. Because in that moment, the Son of God offers himself completely to us under the most humble forms, bread and wine. But we have to see that reading in a bigger context. We have to see it in light of everything that's going on at that moment. If we listen carefully to the words of Jesus, what does he say? This is my body, which will be given up for you. This is the cup of my blood. It will be shed for you. Jesus is using the future tense. He's using the future tense. He's standing at the table with his friends, and he's looking to the next day. Because what immediately follows this is Good Friday. He's looking to the moment where he literally is going to give up his body and blood for us on the cross. Think of the emotion that must have been running through his voice at that moment. The apostles might not have seen the whole picture, but think of what is going through his mind because he knows what's coming. As he's offering them this simple bread and and this simple wine, this is my body. And he had to say those words with trembling. It will be given up for you. This is the cup of my blood. It will be shed for you. From that moment, he unites the Passover table to the altar of the cross, and he literally gives up his life and sheds his blood for us. This is why blessed John Paul says that the Eucharist, in a very real way, is the sacrifice of the cross, perpetuated down through the ages. This is the moment that changes history. Then he gives the command. Do this in remembrance of me. He gives the command to the apostles, to the church, the very beginning of the church. Carry out this Eucharistic sacrifice. Do this now in memory of me. And for 2,000 years, our church has gathered at the altar day after day after day, through her bishops, through her priests, and the people gathering, to allow our Lord to become present in the most amazing and incredible and real way possible, when the substance of bread and wine is actually changed and becomes his body and blood, the presence of Christ amongst us, the Eucharist, the Savior of the world in our midst, present to us, and will soon be adored on this altar. I want to just give you a couple of words from a very old hymn by St. Thomas. He uses three words, and in, in they're words in Latin. He says, visus tactus Gustus. Visus, to see, our seeing. Tactus, our touching. Gustus, our tasting. He says, in te fallitur, he said, it is deceived. I'll spare you my singing. It's a hymn. Our seeing, our touching, our tasting. He said, it is deceived. Because even after that incredible moment, what do we see? Bread. What do we touch? It feels like bread. What do we taste? It feels like bread and wine. So what does St. Thomas say? He says, we believe by what we have heard. Think about that for a moment. We believe by what we have heard. And what have we heard tonight? The words of God's only son. This is my body. This is my blood. As you heard from our youth ambassadors, as Catholics, we don't believe that this bread and wine is a mere symbol of Jesus. We don't believe that this bread and wine represents Jesus. We don't believe that the Eucharist is some kind of metaphor for Jesus. We believe that we adore and that we receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the Son of God. And that Christ himself is experienced most powerfully in the Eucharist. 
St. Augustine put it this way. He said, we recognize in this bread the one who hung on the cross for us. We recognize in that chalice the blood that flowed from his side. A little bit more recently, St. Maximilian Kolbe said, God dwells in our midst. In the blessed sacrament of the altar, he remains with us until the end of the world. And here we find the promise our Lord makes. The last words that the risen Christ speaks in the Gospel of Matthew are these. He says, Behold, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. I think that they're the most consoling words of sacred scripture. I am with you always, even until the end of the age. And he does this through his church by giving us his body and blood, the food for our earthly journey. God is always faithful to us. He will never abandon us. He is present tonight to us. And so tonight, you and I together, with with our bishop, with, with our visiting priests, all of us, we are invited to go into this great mystery, to reflect on the very person of Jesus present to us in the Eucharist, to try to see the face of Christ. Pope John Paul, blessed John Paul, one of my heroes, he says that this is a moment of amazement. He says this, there is a sense of amazement with which the church contemplates the mystery that happens right here. And he said, I myself constantly experience this amazement in our Lord's Eucharistic presence. Tonight we are invited to God's altar to share that same amazement. And what do we bring here? What do we bring? We're asked to bring our praise to God. We're asked to bring our suffering. We're asked to bring our prayers before him. We're asked to bring our work and all that we do to his throne of grace. We're asked to bring every struggle that we might have in school or within our family, knowing that no family is perfect. We're asked to bring those struggles here. We're asked to bring everything that we do in our lives. When we say do them Eucharistically, we bring them back here to Jesus in the Eucharist so that he can strengthen us for our pilgrimage through this life, that he can give us the strength to do everything Eucharistically, but also because he can offer us something that the world never can. What we are offered here at this altar is something that the world will never offer us, eternal life. I'll just conclude with one quote. This is from St. Ignatius of Antioch. And he says this, in the Eucharist we break the one bread that provides the medicine of immortality. He says it is the antidote for death. And he says it is the food that makes us live forever in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.